Good afternoon and welcome to our Libertarian Counterpoint podcast. We have a special segment we're going to be running today, and we have a special guest for that segment, and that's going to be our Cal Exeter segment. Uh, and it has to do with people leaving California. There's been sort of a trend over recent years of more people domestically coming uh, out of California than going in. And so our guest for that segment is going to be uh, Susie Pollock, and she has uh, been uh, living and working in California for the past. Well, well see, uh, actually, before I get into that further, Susie, uh, let me just uh, let the guests know as well. Uh, if you're listening to us and when you want to drop a comment, um, we have a, an email stream going across the bottom of the screen. So feel free to drop that uh, there. And we will try and get to that at the end of the show in a bonus uh, segment if we can. Um, and uh, by the way, my name is Jason McPhee, and I'm your host today, for those of you who can't uh, see the show visually. Uh, so anyways, uh, at that point, let's uh, kick it off. So uh, uh, Cal Exodus, um, you know, uh, essentially it's been a problem where more people have been uh, leaving the state uh, than coming into it. Uh, you know, we, we, California's population has been growing, but it's mainly an issue of immigration, not uh, from uh, migrants outside the country. Um, and uh, I'm going to share with you a brief visual real quick just to give you a sense of what we're talking about. Um, and uh, here we go. Let me see. Well, I work on the, sorry about that slight technical difficulty there. Okay. So uh, According to PPIC, uh, this is a 2020 study, uh, California's population has been growing, but uh, it's been slowing down, and that main growth has been coming in the form of immigration, people from outside the country uh, coming into California. And just, for the audi- just for the audience, Jason, who's PPIC? Uh, PPIC is the Public Policy Institute of California. So okay. they do uh, they essentially give briefings to the legislature uh, uh, about uh, you know changing statistics and demographics in the state for uh, policy uh, for policy purposes, um, but uh, one of the things this is essentially their uh, population curve over the past you know since over the past century essentially, and uh, you can see it's sort of starting to slow down there at the uh, top, and you can see the massive change in demographics as well here. Uh, from 1970, it's mostly white, 77 uh, percent. Today, it's about 37 percent white. And uh, it should also be noted that about 10 million people who live in the state of California now, out of about the 40 million that live in California, are born from another country. So uh, hopefully that gives you a sense of the background of what we're talking about. And we can come back to the demographic or to this uh, graphic, rather, if we need it. But uh, with that, uh, let's get into talking to our guest, uh, Susie Pola. Uh, so uh, tell us a little about yourself, Susie, and what your experience is uh, with California. Okay. Well, I'm a single 64-year-old woman. Um, I'm retired now. I had worked in California for 33 years in the IT industry as a consultant. I moved here from Pennsylvania. My, I met my husband in Pennsylvania and we moved out here together. It was my dream from the time I was a very little girl to live in California. And now my dream is to get the heck out. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. <laughs> the dream. <laughs> the new California dream. <laughs> I guess I guess your California dream became a California nightmare. So okay. <laughs> yeah, and I think it did for a lot of people. I have had wonderful times here. I have amazing memories. I'm glad that I was here. Yes. Um, I love the physical state. It, it's beautiful. There are so many different things. You can go from the mountains to the desert. Um, the climate is is unparalleled. Uh, you know, there, there really are a lot of great things. But I just can't afford it anymore. And I fear for my life anymore. And you know, there's just a lot of issues that I, I just don't want to live with anymore. Well, Susie, yeah. uh, could, could you tell us a little bit, too, about what, what roughly what regions you've been living in in California, uh, southern part of the state, northern part of the state, you know? I've lived, I physically lived in uh, Sacramento for the whole time, okay. the whole 33 years that I'm here. Oh. But my job, um, I had taken me all over the country and, and in many places in, in uh, California. So I have worked throughout the whole state, uh, a lot in the Bay Area, um, a little bit in San Diego. My son lives down in Oakhurst, so I go down that way 
to, to see the area quite a bit. It's beautiful You're near, near Yosemite. Sorry, I couldn't get that out. So, um, but my, mo my primary experience has been here in Sacramento. And I've seen a huge change just in this city. Uh, the, the people are, the friendliness is gone. I think yes. everybody is afraid to, to just be themselves. Uh, we're afraid to leave, leave our homes. Uh, I live yeah. in the pocket, which is considered the safest area of Sacramento. And we have significant crime. Yeah. Well, that's actually me too. <laughs> mm. Are you in Sacramento? Well, I live in I live in Elgrove. So far, we're okay. But um, I live in Elgrove, so um, so I but I kind of have an idea what you're talking about. Yeah, it, it's just I I used to walk on the canals here in the pocket area for exercise and just getting out in the fresh air and everything. I won't do it anymore because there's more tents there than there is walking space. Right. And I carry a taser everywhere I go. Well, and I just don't like living that way. Sure, sure. You have to be able right. to defend yourself, no doubt about that one. Yes. Right. Well, and and my money doesn't go near as far as it used to because I'm paying for those tents. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> well, Susie, I can mention too, I, I've also grown up in Sacramento. I've just been out of Sacramento for a few years in my childhood. But for the most part, I've seen the changes myself too. And it's, uh, it's pretty staggering. I mean, you know, to, uh, lots of tents along the levees on the river, tents near the freeways, uh, in the interchanges. It's uh, it's scary. And that's one of the topics we've talked about on the show in the past as well as is, is the homeless population. And it, it, it seems to be the whole country is, is kind of grappling with it, but it's more of a problem in blue states than, than red states, it seems yeah. like. And, and California has the worst uh, problem as far as uh, unsheltered homeless. So it, uh, probably because of the weather, I imagine. but. Uh, uh, larger population uh, than just about any other state and unsheltered homeless. It definitely <laughs> no, but does. This, but, but, this, but this homeless thing you know, has been going on for so long and you know, and it's not been uh, properly addressed. You know, just across the street yeah. from where I used to work in downtown Sacramento. I mean, these people come there, especially during the winter time, they're, they're trying to get the heat from the those little things in the in the street there. Yeah? And the police will come and clear them out every once in a while, but a few, uh, few days later, they will come right back and this go on and on, the place smells as bad as you could imagine. I have to walk right by there to go catch a train. It's horrible. It really is. It is. It is. I see more human feces on the street than I see dog feces. And it's like, this is absurd. Yes. You yes. don't have to look down everywhere I walk. Yeah, it's yeah, it is. It is funny. I was, I was downtown with my kids not recently, and I was just noticing the, the smell of the fresh smell of urine in the air. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, not, not, the, not the best changes in the world happening. You know, it's, it's funny. One of the uh, things I had to in a, the particular job I work in, we had, we had uh, contracted some economists to come in and talk about a project I was working on. But it was funny, not related to the project. They, one of the first things they said to me when they came in, they said, what happened to your city? <laughs> it's sort of like, you know, it, it just sort of takes you by surprise because you get used to this. Maybe it's like that boiling frog analogy people talk about, but um, the, you know, just gradually over time, you know, lots of buildings become empty, boarded up. Uh oh, looks like maybe we lost Leon. Uh, hopefully he'll be able to get back in uh, while we're talking. But anyways, yeah, it's just a, sort of this uh, slow change over time of, of things just sort of going downhill. You know, maybe some of it had to do with them, you know, opening up the asylums uh, back in the Reagan days or something. I don't know. But but for whatever reason, in California, this tends to be, you know, worse, uh, you know, than a lot of other places. I do think it's the climate that drives, drives them here, even if up in the northeast or the northwest, I mean. But the, the thing that I get frustrated with in talking to a lot of people, everybody, well, they're mentally ill. We have to help them. That was true 20, 30 years ago, but it's no longer the mentally ill as, as much as it used to be. Now it's drug addicts. It's people who don't want to work. And, and so we're throwing money at finding housing for them. They don't want housing. You know, they yeah. don't want the responsibility. And yeah. so I, I just, we're spending our mom, money improperly, I think. And it's just costing more and more to keep doing that. That's my opinion. It's, you know, so. Well, I know uh, well, one of the things, too, that was a big change down here recently is we put in a new stadium in, in Sacramento. Yes. And so it's it kind of interesting because they they, uh, they they took a lot of public resources from parking funds to put into that arena. And I guess that's supposed to be collecting parking funds for the next 
uh, I don't know, 20 or 30 years, I imagine. But they're going to be taking, uh, uh, essentially, they've raised the rates then on all the parking downtown once that came into effect. Uh, and uh, I, I noticed that there was a big move by the police to sort of not to end the homeless problem, but just to end it near the arena. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Push yeah. the homeless farther yeah. away, so it would look revitalized. But you know, it's still, you know, you. It, it was kind of funny. There's a there's a park in Sacramento called Cesar Chavez Park, and it's you kind of right down in the middle of downtown area. And the uh, there's just all kinds of uh, homeless people hanging out there uh, all the time. And I, I was looking across from a building I worked in, you know, uh, uh, and I happened to have a window seat for a short period of time. And I, I looked across and I, I noticed a policeman standing on the parking garage and he was taking down notes looking. And, and I asked the guy who was sitting in the cubicle across from me, you know, what's, what's going on? Oh, yeah, he's there all the time. You know, they're just taking notes on the, you know, the, what's happening with the drugs. <laughs> so I, realized I, had a, I had a front row seat to the, the wire, <laughs> the HBO show, or Showtime show, I guess, the wire. <laughs> you know, it's just uh, crazy. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. Well, uh, um, as, as far as uh, uh, Susie, uh, Things going so where are you headed to then since you're leaving uh, ca uh, California I'm uh, moving to Tennessee that's okay. where I finally decided to go I, I did some research um, and I had worked in many different states as well so I had some experiences in some of them and I was looking for retirement friendly states so I, I picked Tennessee as my first choice it's beautiful there lots of rain but it's beautiful and they don't have any state income tax they do oh, not Exactly. They don't tax your Social Security. You know, just a lot of different things. It makes it affordable. And the the home that I just sold now, I got. I was offered five seventy for it. I could probably buy the exact same home there for three hundred. Wow. wow, I could imagine so. Wow, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. That was important to me. Difference. Big difference. Big difference. Yes. And I'd probably get more land. Yeah. There you go. There you go. You know, so yeah. it's just, I needed to go somewhere where I could trust that my savings will last until I die because I intend to live a long time. You don't want to, um, yeah. you don't want to outlive your money, right? You don't, you don't need that, right? You definitely right. don't need that. So, um, you know, exactly. that, video, that video that you sent out, Jason, I mean, that guy was doing some really good analysis about the things, about the cost of homes here in, in, in California. I mean, it's unbelievable, you know, when you think about all the regulations that people have to put up with and all those things. And in, and they always love to tell us about these afford. Oh, we need affordable house. We need affordable housing. Affordable housing. And they always turn the homeless population. That 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 is the, the homeless that comes because there's no, no affordable housing in, in the state. But it it is it is not. But the mere fact that they pass all these regulations all the time, they're always dumping regulation upon us and making housing so expensive to construct and maintain and they never it never occurred to them th that connection between affordability and the regulations that they pass in and they do it year in year out exactly <laughs> what about it's, it's, the crime in uh, i'm sorry susie go ahead no that's okay um and what you're talking earlier about the change in population with the houses, I'm on a couple Facebook pages uh, meeting people that are also moving out of the state. Um, and I'm focusing a lot on the ones moving to Tennessee. But what I'm hearing very consistently is the people in Southern, uh, Southern California are selling their homes for over a million dollars. And they said it's a significant number are being bought by the Chinese. I don't know what they wow. mean that is it this, I can't believe China itself is buying it, but there's a lot of people coming from China, I guess. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, it, it, this really brings in an interesting uh, demographic shift issue. You know, too, if if we're having a lot of people move out who essentially are are relatively um, high earners, I guess you'd say. You Absolutely. Know, people, yeah. You know, and, and you know, even if it's in retirement, you know, you're bringing in a lot of income to the state, and suddenly all these people are moving out. And even if our population is increasing, if it's increasing with people who you know, are going to be making less, uh, you know, that really, for, I guess, forebodes uh, sort of a different future for California, potentially. Oh, I think that the piper is going to have to be paid real soon. Sure. <clears throat> because it, sure. There's a huge yeah. tax base leaving. Yes. And, and yeah. like I said, a lot of them, I, one of them I, I became very friendly with, he was a policeman in Southern California making 150000 a year. 
he's moved to Tennessee and he's now flying planes, which he improved, he likes better, making a lot less money, and he's he has more time for life. No good, good, good. Well, as far as that, this um this this problem about you know driving away the tax base, New York is now starting to feel the effects of that. Even had the governor on TV recently ridiculously begging people to come back, talking about, oh, I'll buy you a drink oh. and I'll cook you, I'll cook you some food. And all this other thing, so please come back. Right That's why Michael had noise to go. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. A little early for a lead-in. That didn't segue quite right there, Leon. <laughs> I was going to ask about the crime uh, since Susie mentioned that was one of the um, one of her uh, reasons for leaving. What was the the difference in the crime rate in the area of Tennessee that she's moving to? Where I'm going to initially, it is much lower. Um, I'm going there because it's more populated, a lot more people moving there from California, in fact, and it's just, I'm going to the center of Tennessee, but I think where I really want to end up is in Northeast Tennessee in the mountains, which mm -hmm. I, I love the mountains. I grew up in the mountains of Pennsylvania. There mm -hmm. is more crime in Knoxville, which is closer to the mountains. And I understand it's primarily um, drug related and it's yeah. pers you know, pet, property kind of crimes, not, not murders and stuff like that. Um, they uh, do put their criminals into jail and they stay there until they serve well that's that's a good thing definitely yeah. a good thing yeah it's it's and the the northeastern corner or the the eastern part of tennessee is very much uh, conservative very red i guess it is right yes, <laughs> i always get yeah. the colors mixed up <laughs> <laughs> i do too that's funny I, yeah <laughs> I, I was I was wondering one of the things we hear a lot about recently is uh, uh, the the big sucking sound of people going from California to Texas and uh, you know I mean we, we recently high profile people uh, uh, we had um, uh, Elon Musk saying that now because of some regulatory issues related to COVID in his county that he has his business in he was thinking of moving to uh, Texas and Joe Rogan uh, who's one of the leading podcasters in the world he's also talked about moving his show to Texas because, you know, it just comes out the door and, you know, the stuff he sees is just, you know, uh, ridiculous. And also, too, you know, looking at the higher taxes that may be on the horizon here in, in California as well. Uh, is, was there some reason, I guess, why not Texas and, uh, you know, why Tennessee? For me, there is. Uh, that was my second choice was Texas. I did spend time there earlier this year, went and looked at a lot of properties, saw beautiful homes for very reasonable prices. The one that I would have bought in a minute, um, the annual real estate taxes was nine thousand dollars, and I'm like, whoa, that's what I thought I was leaving. So, uh. <laughs> so that, and I don't like, I don't really like Texas. Texas is um, flat, brown. You know, it's just. I, I love Tennessee because it's hilly. It's a lot of green. Uh, Tennessee is the third largest, our third biggest amount of rain per year in the uh, country. Oh, wow. And so it's got a lot of rain and, and yeah, it could be a pain in the butt, but it, it gives you that beauty. I miss the green. I miss the fall. That's what I grew up with. Yeah. You know, so, but Texas Speaking is big and empty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of green and uh, uh, what was that? Mountainous, I guess. Did you ever look at Idaho? I have been there and I liked it. I don't want to live in snow ever again. I grew up in snow. Yeah. <laughs> I like to Had visit enough. snow. Yeah. <laughs> but Don't yeah, that's shoveling there, it so. and driving in it and stuff. Nah. Okay. Okay. So that yeah, was my. So there we are. Now we're at Tennessee. Now we're at Tennessee. Exactly. And I, I've spent a lot of time in Phoenix. I work there because that's another place, Arizona overall. But Phoenix, I had a number of projects I worked there. And I remember every time I came out of my hotel in the morning and stepped on the blacktop, you could hear the shoes sizzle. Oh yes. Wow. Oh, yes. So yeah. that's not for me. It's a little bit too hot. Yeah. You get two weeks a year. That's bearable. Yeah. I guess <laughs> Flagstaff is about the only climate-wise uh, city that I've heard of in Arizona. That's that's kind of you know bearable. Flagstaff. And I've heard that too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. There seems to be a lot of people going to North Carolina and Georgia as well. I, I really didn't look into those. I know North Carolina is very nice, but 
I think that they do do have state taxes, and I was trying to avoid that. I paid my share. I had a nice income. They got a lot of money out of me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, wasted, they wasted a lot of it, too. But Susie, if we start to get closer toward our, our wrap up on the show, one of the big questions I wanted to get out of you is if, if you had to make a pitch to the state of California uh, to get me to stay, what would you have to do? California, you know, California, I'm getting ready to leave. You know, there's a lot of problems here. Yeah, if you want me to stay, this is what you need to do for me. What, do you have any thoughts on that? Um. I wrote some things down, but it was all about why it, why it wouldn't change it, my mind right now at this point. There's, there's too much to change, but they have to start <laughs> focusing on the people who are providing for the state instead of the people who are coming to take from the state. And, and that if they don't change that, the people who are doing the providing are going to leave. You know, and it's I, it, the the whole money issue really concerned me, especially as I got into re retirement. I I know that my savings would not last me. <laughs> because every year the taxes go up more and more. Um, the, the general population really, really needs to be re-brainwashed. And, and I find that very interesting. The, the one thing in particular I can point to that I, just blew me away was this new gas tax. I have been paying a huge gas tax for over 30 years to, prepare, to repair roads and maintain infrastructure, and it was never done, so we had to go and increase the taxes so that we could do it. Where's the tax I already paid? Yeah. Nobody holds the government here accountable. And so until that happens, it's not going to change because they're living a great life. So it's those yeah, types of things. Who's, who's living a great life? Uh, the government? Yes. Yeah. The politicians. Yeah, yeah the politicians. It's not us. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we are, we they can't we have, have that we have, become, we have become their servants. That's what's happening. We have become their servants. Absolutely. And it's supposed to be the other way around. And exactly. we don't pay them enough to live the way they live. Right. So where is that money coming from? China. And China. <laughs> it's coming from our taxes. <laughs> no, it's coming from our, yeah. Yeah, Actually, it's from it's a, a lot of places, yeah. And I mean, lobbying. the China thing is interesting in, in a couple of respects. Uh, first of all, they probably won't make it a permanent home. So therefore, I mean, they won't live here more than 50% of the year. So therefore, they won't be subject to uh, income tax. Uh, and mm -hmm. they won't probably even become American citizens. And so it'll just be like a vacation home that they'll just come right. visit. They'll pay property tax, but they won't pay. And they'll pay, you know, sales tax while they're here. And maybe some taxes on a vehicle or two that they, you know, Mercedes or you know, right. whatever uh, that they own. But, uh, you know, they won't be paying those other kinds of taxes uh, that uh, the, the per person that originally that last owned the home, the American citizen, the California citizen that left to Tennessee or wherever to greener pastures or greener mountains, um, they will... Uh, you know, they, they won't be getting the tax revenue that they were from those people leaving now. So Absolutely. plus it was year long. So there you have Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I had heard a number of years ago, too, that um, a huge amount of the property across the United States is owned by China. So this mm -hmm. is something that China has been doing for a long time. So they're getting all the, the lease money from it. So all that's leaving the mm -hmm. country. Yeah, it's, it's well, part of the economy. Well, over the last 10, 10, 15 years, they have been they've been buying up a lot of property. Really, they have been. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, it, it's it, you know, if dollars are going to China because we're uh, we're going into Walmart and everything is made there, made in China and sold at Walmart, those dollars go to China. But uh, you know, instead of just Oh, knucklehead! Oh, that's the sound for our knucklehead right. noise patrol. So near the end of the show, we shut like to end. Shut up about it. Shut up about economics, Tim. Okay. Well, actually, this knucklehead noise patrol is going to be related, and and we've already gotten a preview from Leon. But they, I guess people like you in California. It's it's not. I guess uh, this is happening in other blue states too. So you know, apparently, uh, um, in New York, uh, the the governor of New York, uh, Cuomo. Uh, was recently pleading with, uh, I guess, high earners to come back to New York, uh, you know, who are 
uh, I guess, fleeing there, you know, <laughs> and, but coming, I guess, doing this on television, no less, you know, just saying that, uh, you know, when are you coming back? He says he's calling them on the phone, you know, uh, you got to come back, I'll buy you dinner, I'll buy you a drink, he said. And another thing that was interesting, he said in that interview also, is he says, 1% of the population pays 50% of the taxes and they are mobile, is what he was saying. So, you know, just something maybe well, California can, can learn from. Cuomo, yeah. what Cuomo seems to like, his epiphany. <laughs> it, took, it took it took this it took it, it took this for the governor of, of New York to realize that the rich people, the one percenters, are mobile. They will take their money and go someplace else. Look at what Donald Trump did. That is exactly what he did. He left New York and he's now his residency now is in Florida. And when Trump did that, as a matter of fact, Cuomo himself told him good rhythms. But now, but now. He realized the consequence of people like Donald Trump leaving New York. The tax base is being depleted yeah. as people like this move to other states. And now Cuomo going to come up now. He want to be their chef. He want to buy them a drink. He want to be their bartender. As if that is going to bring them back to the state and not the change of policies. Uh, these people are so ridiculous. It, it drives me crazy. Yeah. And then AO, AOC kicked Amazon out. And, exactly. And Cuomo. Exactly. And, you know, yeah, they, Amazon was going to set up a, a second uh, headquarters and uh, in New York City, but yes. uh, and they worked out they were working on deals with some tax breaks and so on th and such. But the uh, uh, the overall increase in economic um, activity of of them going there and jobs and everything and the taxes everyone would have been paying would have been enormous. But they got so much flack from from every, all the government there that uh, he said, forget it. I'm, I'm going someplace else. He went, I can't sure. remember where he went. He may have gone to Tennessee or something, but exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so what, what does Susie think about that uh, comment? Susie, would you uh, go back to New York or would you come back to California if um, new scum would take you out to dinner? <laughs> No, <laughs> no. Once I sell this house, I won't be able to afford to come back here because I could never rebuy. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. You could come visit. Though. Yeah, I will come visit because I have good friends here I want to see. But yeah. I mean, that's the problem. The people who are leaving all know they can't ever go back because yeah. how do you bring those prices back down again? I, yeah. I, that's going to take yeah. years and years. There's going to be ugliness before it gets better. Yeah. And, and, and and unfortunately, unfortunately, that is true. It will, it will take some financial crisis or something dramatic for, for the citizens of the state to wake up to the realities of what the government is doing in their name. And this, yeah. is, what, and, and this is what is happening, I think, little by little, as people like Susie and others start leaving the state, eventually this, thing is, this crap is going to hit the fan and we're going to have to deal with this in one form or the other. Well, you know, Leon, we're just about out of time, and so we're going to wrap up. Uh, but, you know, one last thing I, I just thought about, you know, with the whole Cuomo thing. Uh, it, Milton Friedman said it perfectly. There's no such thing as a free lunch. So when Cuomo's offering you free dinner. Forget it. But anyway, well, I wanted to thank you. Well, I, I wanted to thank you so much, Susie, for joining us today. We had a lot of fun, and I'm glad you were able to uh, give us your perspective on, uh, you know, your experience with California. Thank you.